Hello, friends. Welcome to episode two of my Xeno podcast, which I have officially decided to title Jungian Themes. Now, I'm sure you're all wondering where in the heck that came from and what it means. So basically, it is a meme from the larger Xenoblade Discord. Basically, there is this one dude who was always talking about how the Xeno series has always championed Jungian themes and how Xenoblade 2 is a deviation from that. And basically, it's really funny and I don't have a better title, so there you have it. Anyway, as last time, this podcast is about trying to be both entertaining and informative and just trying to give you guys more information and thoughts on the series from a bunch of uh, famous YouTubers and myself. No really strict format and conversation just kind of flows naturally. This week, I am once again joined by Enin Lee, who is probably going to be joining me for most episodes since he's really good at talking, and Blunts, who makes a lot of funny Xenoblade-related videos. Alright guys, so why don't you guys introduce yourselves? Am I going first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have to right, go second it. on account of me being Canadian. Right, let's All right. do it. All right, I'm Blunts. Um, <laughs> I, I do YouTube, but my YouTube is something else. It's all kinds of stuff, but I do mostly Xenoblade content, kind of, but it's kind of like a mix of everything else. But I'm mainly known for Xenoblade. I do a lot of um, funny videos, um, edits. People love my editing, and that's basically what my channel is accumulated of. But yeah, that's... That's me. Hey guys, and I'm Lee, and I've been doing Xenoblade stuff uh, for about as long as the game has been. I also do YouTube, mostly guide content, but I started shifting more towards the commentary. As you guys know, I love to talk, and that's why I'm here. Yes, Lee is very good at talking, that's why he's going to be here basically every time I do this. But you know. Yeah, you can't escape me, you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm Anel, everyone should know me at this point. I make gameplay videos for the games because that's all I'm good at, but that's okay. Breaking records left and right. That's that's what I do. That's all I do. Anyway, yeah. since uh, Lee and I were on last week, we talked about video making last week. I wanted to uh, ask Blunt specifically, I guess, how'd you get into the series and uh, how'd you start making videos for the game? Oh my! I don't even know how I got into the series. <laughs> all right, this is a funny. This is a funny story. Oh my lord! Okay, okay at let first, me hear. I didn't even like Xenoblade. <laughs> oh, I didn't Xenoblade. either. Don't worry. It's no, it's two. freaking weebs, man. When I, when I first saw Xenoblade 2, this game, oh my, I was like, what is this game? It looks like trash. It's just filled with, like, anime boobs and all this <laughs> other stuff. Dude, I didn't know how I got into this series, but when I picked up the game, I was just in love. It was like a miracle. I don't know how it happened. Like, as soon as I started playing the game, like, I got past chapter one, I was like, this game is it. And I just it just went on from there. One thing led to another, and now here I am. That is yeah. basically <laughs> the uh, the typical Xenoblade Chronicles yeah. 2 experience. Are you, are you serious? Dude, that was Massive. crazy. That, that yeah, was like a revelation. Okay. Well, yeah. well, for me, it was actually, like, it didn't. It took me to, like, chapter 4 or 5 to like the game. So you're, you actually what? liked it earlier than I did. So, <laughs> yes. It was that one cutscene with the fight scene with Malice and Pyro. I was That was a, such a good cutscene. I, I love that one. That, that was such, oh, my goodness. I've never I seen actually, a cutscene that good before. Yeah, you also you could have had the entire game be that cutscene. I would have been totally down for it. Really, really right. nice one. All right. <laughs> I, it took me till the end of chapter three to find to uh, to really like enjoy seeing. Okay, I, I want to see where this story goes now. You know, and <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't rent like chapter four was kind of a letdown as far as like plot progression. But once we got to chapter <sighs> five, I was into it. I think I think I was just upset because I really wanted like an X game, another X game or something, and like two was like this stupid anime game is not giving me what I want, you know? Like you oh, wanted more yeah, of those yeah, simple yeah. X mechanics, right? Yeah, right. I think I think I see two is like a combination of like everything else. It's like it has an okay story. Well, not I'm gonna say okay, but it had a really good story, and it was like a mix of all the games in general. That's what I mean. Yeah, that, that's but, the thing. Like, they yeah. combined a lot of the different things in, gar in regards to, like, overall mechanics. It was a lot more streamlined, so more people keying it into it. And, yeah, it's like, I get what people say in regards to the story, too. Some people really, like, dislike the story because of how different it was from 1. But I always found that 2 was the more, like, character-driven story. Yeah, whereas yeah, yeah. 1 was a more plot-driven story. And depending on what one you prefer, naturally you're going to prefer one over the other. And that's just how these th kind of things go. Yes, to say, people love these games for different reasons. Because with mm -hmm. one, people like it for the story, obviously. People like X for gameplay. And mostly people love two for the characters. And you see that on Twitter with, like, the art. You don't, you never see art of one or X characters. It's like, you can tell the difference between Oh, yeah. Everyone, everyone's over the they moon. They love the characters, man. They love well, them. For, like, I, I can't, like, honestly, Twitter can just be Xenoblade 2 artists. Yeah. I'm just down for that. I, I'm totally down for that. Well, really I, nice people, too, if you interact with them. Yeah, I think mostly it's just because 2 just set the series in motion in general. 
That's yeah, where it's put it on the radar. Up. Yeah. But I and still think it's a pretty good game. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the case, too. I remember hearing that. I think, like, ARMS uh, actually outsold Xenoblade 2. It but the has. Thing is, though, like, like it has. Which is thousands. so funny. Which is so funny, because I consider Xenoblade 2 to be, like, that one that suddenly everyone's talking about. But I guess in terms of being part of the Xeno series, yeah, by far, this is the, the big one that's really going to set things in motion for there's, the series. There's a lot more vocal fans of uh, Xenoblade 2 than there are of ARMS. There's a lot of people who probably bought ARMS and never played it again because the Switch didn't have many games when it came out. Yeah, we needed something arm. competitive. Yeah. Yeah. And with the advent yeah. of uh, Smash Online, we're still looking for that one, but no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, I play your arms for one hour and I never play it again. <laughs> really? Wow. I did not, I, I did not I buy know. arms. I knew after the test like the test fire thing that I was not gonna play it like ever, so I just did not buy it. And I, I tried to give it another chance, but I don't think the motion controls they focus way too much on motion controls, man. They, that's just too much. Like I, if it didn't focus on motion co controls too much, I think it would have been okay, but it just... It was an experimental kind of game, yeah, in a way. Yeah, I understand. And it didn't I, work. I, th I think a game like Xenoblade might benefit from motor controls. I don't know. I don't know about that I, one. I have the con QTEs, I have the concept, man! I, don't I, have know the concept. That one. I have the concept. I, I appreciate the effort, but it just didn't work out. It's just unfortunate <laughs> for ARMS. But I, said, I think it's a good game, in a way. One of, the, yeah. one of the things I think that's interesting about too is that you guys mentioned how it like kind of like launched the series into like more mainstream, and I think that's kind of interesting because most people consider like uh, the Xeno series only like the three Blade games. People always forget about like Saga and Gears, and it's like so it really took seven games for the series to like really take off in a sense, I guess you know. There's just something about two really that just made it because like, again, like, I think the story for all three of us that are sitting in this room right now is just it's like. We were completely skeptical about it, but it just had that one thing that hooked us, and I think that's something that has been missing for seven games. I can't yeah. say what it is though. I think I, it was I mostly kinda... the Switch that took off. That it just oh, the Switch yeah. just blew up, and that's okay, what can probably I say, contributed yeah. to it. Can I just say the thing about the Switch? I feel like we're in like Nintendo's next golden era. We haven't had something as like <laughs> awesome as the Switch the yeah, for Nintendo. Since the Wii. Yeah. No, yeah, it's just it's just nuts how much is going on, and we even see from like E three how much momentum it's been getting. It's just crazier and crazier every year. It never fails to disappoint, and I love that. And I'm just happy to be a Nintendo nerd all over again. <laughs> Dude, I, I was all Nintendo. about Call of Duty back in the day, and now I just oh, yeah? I was a Nintendo at first, and then it just kind of grew off of me like a childhood kind of thing. But oh yeah. When I grew up, it just came back to me like you just slapped me in the face like get back over here. I was like yeah, let's do it. And Nintendo Switch got a lot of good games, man. I was surprised mm. they're bringing all these other games too, from like PS4, all these violent games. Like they weren't all, even all about that back in the day. So I'm like, that's crazy. Oh, so I, I right recently now. just beat Doom, so I, I can hear you on that one. Yeah. <laughs> I like Doom. I have that game as well. <laughs> oh man, so. so angry, so angry. I just hope Nintendo Two could have used some of that. No, the, the, thing, <laughs> the thing is, I think I don't know if they said this, but I do remember it vaguely. But they did say they wanted to go into like a more sexual kind of theme with their next game in Monolith. I think they yeah, said yeah, that. I think darker, they did. Yeah. Well, and I was like, whoa. Well, yeah, I was like, whoa. Okay. Yeah, I, I remember hearing about that. There was something along the lines of like them wanting to make it have more mature themes, and that's really weird. But at the same time, uh, again, this could also just be an issue of translation. It's, I feel yeah, that. It might be. I, I feel as... that Xenoblade overall actually has very mature themes. It's just that it packages it in a much more fantasy anime kind of way. And that's yeah. kind of what always grips me. Like, even today, I'm still finding out all these different things about Xenoblade 1. Uh, I, I beat it very recently, and I, I kind of had my own thoughts about it. But then as I looked more and more into it, looking at it from all the different themes, I'm like, this is actually a really, really pessimistic and dark game at first, and then eventually it becomes something else. But man, it's just, it's crazy how much they were able to incorporate different themes. I can go on about it, but I won't, I promise. <laughs> Dude, That's I kind of Takahashi's mantra, though, because even in, uh, Saga and Gears are kind of more mature games than uh, the Xenoblade games are, so it kind of makes sense yeah. how they would say that, I would say. Yeah. It's just that, the, yeah, so like I guess like they want to have that return to form. But even so, though, you look at, like, you know, for for one and two, just the themes that they incorporate, surprisingly very very mature. I I feel like like you'd have to be like a lot more older or much more well read to fully appreciate those ones. 
But uh, right. we'll we'll get to that in a future thing. I, I do agree with that though. Don't my worry. my crackpot theories about how it's about atheism and I... Christianity. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Really well, at... Saga Damn. is not trying to hide the it fact does. that it's about Christianity. Ah. Don't worry. Saga, no, no, Xenoblade, no, Xenoblade Two, if anything, is an allegory and allusion to Christianity. Yeah, it is Xenoblade too. Don't worry. One is an allusion to atheism. Believe me. Yep. The we'll one get thing, there eventually. dude. The one thing about these games, I just want to know how they're all connected because I know they are in some kind of way. Because there are so many theories out there, like pointing with like the Zohar and other other stuff. When I saw the Zohar in two, I didn't really know mm. about it at first. But when I saw the connection in one, I was like, "Whoa, wait, what's going on here? Are all these games connected? Like Saga, all this other stuff?" Because I've just yeah, researched on these things. From the, yeah, speaking as an outsider, it was really fun to see longtime fans go nuts over the details. Yeah, because they don't really go into detail about what this mean, what everything means. They just, yeah. they just show it, and I'm like, "What? What does this mean? I want to know more <laughs> about this." So you gotta make up your own theories and stuff like that. They don't say anything. That's what makes me mad sometimes, man. <laughs> that's, I want to that, know that's the intrigue of the lore, my friends. <laughs> I want to know like how because they do. I think it's vaguely mentioned that X may. I'm not saying it is, but it may be connected to the other games. But people say it's yeah. not. But I some think it is in some not. kind of way. I, I, I think honestly, they yeah. set it up to be loosely connected just by mentioning the multiverse kind of thing in uh two. Yeah. So they don't okay. have to like directly like um. What's the word? They don't have to like try to directly connect everything if they don't want to. They kind of set themselves up for like a lot of options in the future by doing that. Just yeah. like with all of this, they don't tell you that all of this is a third person. They just they just assume you know that it's. <laughs> I think for that particular yeah. one, I, I think part of the half of it too is just we probably need to assume that maybe they didn't think that far, and that's kind of what opens it up opens it up yeah. to a lot more theories. Honestly, I think. Um, I, I feel like there would be a lot of research and videos done about this. If not, we could just get Luxon in here the next time. But otherwise. <laughs> We'll, just, um, we'll we'll have a look at that later. It's uh, it's crazy though, really good lore. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting stuff in the series. I mean, even in X, who was like the really weak plot, they set it themselves up for a lot of stuff to talk about in the future, like the uh, Sumerian Federation or something that they like uh -huh. literally never go into. That's like supposed to be like some like larger like uh, organization ruling over the Ganglion and like everything in like the like universe or something. Oh really? And they like never. Mm. I guess you're not that far in the plot yet. Sorry for those my very minor nah, spoilers. No, 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 I don't care about the spoilers. X, X is something else. I, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 honestly, uh, okay. Here's here's the thing about me. I actually don't mind spoilers so much as I care about how they got to that plot point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like the fact that we're all uh, mimeosomes, for example. Like, I remember they mentioned that in Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and I was like, Mimi also me? What the heck is that? But then I play Xenoblade X. Oh, okay. So we're yeah, living see, in near Automata see. now. Cool. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sometimes it depends on what kind of spoiler it is, but they don't really affect me. I, I got to see how it happens. So like, yeah, spoiler, right. Really. Yeah, yeah, that's sometimes kind of what it is. Like, how they show the spoiler. Vague. Yeah, don't spoilers are too vague. Sometimes I got to know exactly like how le one thing led to another, hmm. like, how this got to that point, or how this person died. Like, how? Why did he die? Like, what's, what's the context behind his death? Like, yeah. why did Nia die? Yeah. Hmm. What's <laughs> yeah why did Nia die? <laughs> I thought she was gonna die at first, like at some point. I mean, she might die. No, she ended up being the exact opposite. Okay, yeah, I guess no. one was incoming. She's the opposite. She's the person that actually literally resurrects people, which is a power that no other blade has. Nia had the no. weirdest character. Like, what am I trying to say here? The weirdest character development I've ever seen. Like, <laughs> she's a really. Funny they started one, yeah. dumping character experts. No, her character just got dumped into me like in one chapter, in like one full suit. I was like, whoa, where is this coming from? Yeah, see, yeah. I, I, feel like, I don't think I like about you. I oh feel like a God. lot of people about Nia is that they either like her a lot for her design and they played in Japanese, so they like the, the Nia cat, cat voice. Yeah. But then for people that played English, they, like I felt her voice, like I really like Catherine My Hue, but her voice seemed kind of weird for the character. But yeah. then as it kept on going, and obviously, of course, voice direction, it felt like, like sometimes the voice direction, the characters didn't even know where they were at sometimes. But the thing is, though, is that when it came to Nia's character, she really, I, I really didn't like her all that much, but then once you get to chapter 7, and you start finding out more and more about her, she ends up becoming this really insanely cool character with just these amazing, awesome powers that actually rival m most of the best blades in the entire game, uh, canonically speaking, not gameplay speaking, but canonically speaking. <laughs> it's so cool. But, I uh, just wish she wasn't forced on Rex, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I think someone out there loved Nia so much that they wanted that to happen. God. I I do think uh, 
Nia's character is really interesting because they, like like one said, they dump it all into like one chapter and like the rest of the game is just kind of <laughs> there. And it's like, well, where'd this all come from? And then I think they really did her dirty, not only with the cutscene where Rex is like all you guys, but they did her dirty, like they overshadowed her. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I need to talk they about, I need to talk about her. that. Hold on, I, let me just finish. Yeah. They overshadow <laughs> yeah, her in the same chapter by like showing Numa, like at the end of it. And it's like, <laughs> it's uh, like, okay, uh, <laughs> like, you know, uh, look, look, Pyro got upgraded too, look at that. <laughs> Pyro and Victor at the same time. <laughs> you can have both of them on the same, like the same person. Look, Rex, I can beat the Aegis myself, even though the oh Aegis does have the Monado. I know, but but we have a hot green-haired girl in our team now. <laughs> I like I like Mia, but she's so weird to like sometimes. Like I like her accent, all this all this stuff, she, but she, like I, I feel it, like her fan base is like a literal cult at some points. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bit yes. of a Neo cult going honestly, on. There's but a cult yeah. for almost all yeah. the main characters, honestly, all the girls. Oh yeah, for me, like I like for me, I'm such a Cassandra dork. Like I could actually start a cathedral and convert people to Castianity just so just so I can make things be known. But unfortunately unfortunately she's not nearly as popular even with the person that made her, which makes me sad. He keeps drawing Mithra all the time. Oh, sad. Yeah. Of the popularity of blades. There are some blades I have Forgot existed. Like I haven't even done their blade quest yet, man. Oh, oh, what you, 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 Gorg or something? I don't oh, know. His name. Gorg is a JoJo <laughs> character. How can you not okay. like him? <laughs> I've never used don't... him in my life. Who okay. Because you know oh, how I have God. to do the Blade Showcase series. Yes. Yes. So, <laughs> yes. I get people asking me about Gorg literally once a week, and it's like the same five people. So yeah, you know, there's a Gorg cult cult out there somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> my gosh. No, but can I just quickly say about the whole I love you, Nia, thing? Yes, go ahead. Okay, so my thing about that one, I, I felt like people didn't get that scene the way it was supposed to. And granted, I think part of it might have also just been how people interpret things. It also could be an issue of translation. But the way that I saw is that the whole point of that entire cutscene was when Rex, obviously, he didn't have a sword except for the two sites by Rock, which are useless. And you're fighting against all those rogue people. And what happens is that when you're inside of the Spirit Crucible, you notice that with with like Nia finally awakening her powers to help, the whole point about Rex saying "I love you" and all you guys, obviously, it seems like really like stupid how they had to frame it that it was like he was saying "I love you" to Nia only to suddenly go to everyone else. But that's because the whole point of that trial, the whole point of them going to the Spirit Crucible and being worthy of the third sword from Adam, is because Adam confirms that. The reason why Rex fights, the motive for Rex fighting isn't because of revenge, it isn't out of some selfish desire to be a hero, it's literally because he genuinely cares about all the people of all rest, and he wants to give them salvation by sending them to Elysium. And, it, 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 yeah. That is very the thing, the, thing, the, thing about, the thing about Nia is, like, you don't really get any hints that she even likes Rex. Until, and it's one heart to heart, that's the only thing you get. Yeah, yeah, see, there's one heart to heart, and it's an optional heart to heart, too, might I add. <laughs> I didn't even know she liked Rex until that one cuss. I was like, where, no, no, where did this no, come that, from? That's the other thing, too. I <laughs> never interpreted her as her liking Rex until that point. That was the worst part. It's just, yeah. Uh, yeah. I hated I, it, but I could understand where, where Rex is coming from because maybe, I don't know how it's implied in Japanese, but through English, you get no hints. You know, like no, no, that, that, that was kind of the issue, too. The thing about Rex's yes. character, what I like so much, is that people always poke fun at him for being the, han the harem anime protagonist. But the thing about Rex, though, is that he actually genuinely... I, I never caught he's a, any. He's a kid, real, like, yeah, I, I never really caught any romance. Even with like Pyra, it's a fifteen-year-old kid and Miss Balloons talking to him when he just died. And obviously, they're close because he's indebted to her for saving his life. Like, there is a closeness to them, but outside of just a couple of those funny, etchy scenes, there isn't really any reason to believe there's anything more than just a very deep friendship. And that's kind of the whole theme of Zenblade Chronicles too: is that all the blades are incomplete without their driver. And in the case of most of them, like Pandora and Zeke, it's a very literal incomplete without each other kind of thing going on. So, I always thought the theme of Xenoblade 2 was like um, your purpose in life or something along those lines. That's oh, yeah. No, yeah. There's a lot of themes in there. There's a lot of themes. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot, but uh, that's definitely one of them, though. The real theme is giant mechs, honestly. Oh, yeah. The mechs. <laughs> that's in every Xeno <laughs> game. It's always giant mechs. <laughs> Yeah, speaking, I, I yeah, yeah, please. Speaking of X Men, the mechs I love the scale. That's probably the first time I ever saw like vehicles implemented in such a way into like the gameplay. That was really cool. That's the one thing I like about X. Just the gameplay just that just capitalized on the entire game in a way for me. It, it honestly would have been the main selling point for me if they introduced them a lot faster. 
of because for me, like I, I love like giant robots. Like I, I, ever since I was a kid, I was a huge fan of the Transformers. And when I found out that these guys can transform into vehicles, I'm just like, oh yes, please, I'll buy this game for. Oh, that's what it reminded me of. Yeah, Transformers. Yes, that's <laughs> what I like. That's what I like. That's what I like. <laughs> yeah, that was my that was my stuff as a kid too, man. G so one, all those other stuff. Yeah. All right. I, yeah, I guess Bay. since we started talking about Skells, we'll get into that because I did want to talk about it specifically because I know Lee is playing through it now. I don't know if Blends has beaten it yet, but I know he was really close. So, uh, I'm what are your for thoughts? It. What are the thoughts on X? <laughs> My thoughts on X is that the story is a joke. <laughs> That's the first time we got. How me. dare you? <laughs> Tasu what? is a. How I could you say something Tasu. so brave? <laughs> How I could you say anything? <laughs> I hate Tatsu. Tatsu. Oh my god. How is that a character? It's, it's Honestly, funny. Okay, please tell me he's food, Tatsu. dude. No, he's not. He's food. It's funny. You don't get it. He have, it's he high quality. Be a character. I have never, I never would have thought there would be a character. Well, I'm not saying Ricky is bad, but still, I've never seen a character like even more useless in the story and as a character at the same <laughs> damn time. It, it makes no sense. Like, why is he even here? And plus, he makes Lin terrible. He makes me hate Lin sometimes. If no, it weren't I, for Tatsu, I would have loved Lin to like a greater extent. <laughs> but now I, I just can't stand Lin sometimes, man. No, because for like, me, I, I just want him to shut up. <laughs> but I love Lin, but it's just Tatsu. Just okay. get, get Tatsu away from Lin. Like, yeah, no, I, I could see that. <laughs> the, the minute Tatsu came into Lin's like story or whatever, he just he just came worse. Oh but, yeah, I can totally see that. I'm moving, moving on from like Tasu and everything else. No, we can move on if you need to. Dude, yeah, X is like the most experimental Xenoblade game. I think a lot of the features they saw in X was well, they used in X was like some kind of like something for them to use for like the future games. Oh yeah, I wish they would have brought like the online stuff over to two, but I doubt something like that would work into. I, I don't yeah. think they had enough time to even implement that stuff. Honestly, but at the same time. If they added, yeah. like, online to challenge mode in 2, where, like, three people yeah. could control three different drivers, I would be ha have, like, play that every day. Um, yeah, but the thing is, though, that would mean Nintendo's online would have to be good. You're right. Yeah. Especially with, like... There are so say? many times in challenge yeah. mode that could be so much faster if I could control all three drivers, honestly. Driver <laughs> raids. Especially with, like, how big the Switch is and, like, the online side of things, I think it would work really well. And yeah. two also blew up, so that would have worked too. Yeah, I'm thinking in X2 they'll probably have have some element of online multiplayer again. If so, I, I think I think there'll be something in the future for us at the very least. Oh, I, I definitely would like to see an X2. Like I haven't beaten Xenoblade X, but there's a lot of good ideas here. There's a lot of stuff they did. For me, the biggest appeal of X actually, and I've said this so many times on stream, but like. Just the thing about this particular game just feels like such a heavy upgrade over Xenoblade Chronicles 1. Xenoblade Chronicles 1's combat, I did, like, it's not bad, it's just that clearly there was room for improvements, and I feel like X already, and this is for me in my opening hours of the game, has done so much to really capitalize on that potential, I'm really, really glad. Yeah, I yeah. think the thing about X is, like, the quests. The quests in that game are, like, really... Damn, I was not expecting to be that good. Like I was so invested into this one quest where you have to find the um some guy who some guy who got killed. It was like yeah. a murder quest, like a detective kind of quest, and I love that. And I, yeah. there's like, there a different yeah. ending. That's the thing that set me off too. I was like, there's a different ending to this quest. I could say it, everybody, well, not everybody, but I could like get a different ending or a, di yeah. a better ending, a good ending. I was like, whoa, that's kind of cool. And that, apparently, that's not the only quest that's like kind of like that. There's like more quests that I can get invested into. But that's oh, and honestly, it blew my mind. It blew my mind that there was actually such things as right or wrong answers in these. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You can wow. kill people. You can get people killed in like half the quests in this game by like selecting the wrong thing. Oh I man. The, the questions were memes. I thought they were jokes. So I just chose yeah, whatever right? I thought was funny. <laughs> no, I, here's You're my problem. Dude. I grew up playing Mass Effect and like other Bioware games where you kind of just end up at the final point anyway. Yeah. Um, I didn't expect Xenoblade X to have that much depth in terms of choices. And the quests in X are really good sometimes. Oh yeah, there's I, a lot of them too, especially like the the affinity on um, missions. Those are really good too. And there's so I, many, uh, yeah. There's so many characters in X too. Now that you think about it, yeah. hell yeah. Lot, One of my my favorite quests in uh, X is the is the quest line with uh, Alex. Do you know who that is yet, Lee, or not? No, is is it a guy or a girl? Have you played that quest, Blunds? You would never forget it if you have. I can assure <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah. I, I know Alex is, but I don't think I played her a fame mission. No, it's not think. a her, it's a him. 
Oh, I thought I, I, I thought it was be cool. Like, oh, it's no, a computer. Alexa, 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 Alexa is a part okay, of this. Is Alex? Oh, okay. Alexa. No, they got the, there's this quest oh, in the game where this dude is like, I want to educate the Xenoforms in the town about human customs because they're gonna live here. They gotta be like us, right? Okay. And so, uh, so it seems a little racist, but then you get to the actual part and you realize it's really racist because the dude just like has them on a cliff and he's just shooting them off the cliff and. Yeah, and if you can. I, you don't even have to stop him. You can just stand there while he just kills oh, them. Oh wow! <laughs> and it's like the funniest <laughs> thing. Like, <laughs> and then the quest will like you, you can you know, the quest will just end. Like it'll just end if you just let him kill him. He's like, I hope to work with you again in the future. <laughs> oh <What>? man! <laughs> and it's like so funny. That's messed up. <laughs> it's actually really game funny. We don't take kindly to these xenoforms. That's the thing, man. This game is so funny sometimes. Like the quests are hilarious. Oh like, my gosh. Yeah, there, I actually feel is... bad not paying attention as much as I should be. Yeah, there is this one quest where mm -hmm. some a lady just commits suicide at the end. I'm like, what? What? <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> that's uh, yeah. Don't don't spoil that one. That one's. <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil that one. I'm gonna tell you <laughs> what it was, but it's so funny and out of nowhere. I was like, wait, <laughs> where did that come from? I didn't know she was gonna kill herself, but I was like, well, okay, that's interesting. Oh man, yeah, that, one's, that seen... one's a really good one, actually. I okay, like okay, that. okay. So okay, that's the thing though. If the side quest could be that zany and crazy and so out there, I feel like I, I I'd feel really good about Zed and Blade X2. <laughs> I just hope they put as much effort oh, into man. it, but I don't know when we'll get X2 because I know they're working on Zelda right now, or at least some of them are. So exactly, and honestly, though, I kind of found that I've been very vocal about this, but I would rather see more like resources diverted towards an X2 than a Xenoblade X port, primarily because you know I've already spent so much time on the Wii U. Feels kind of weird to go back now, but uh, yeah. I don't think they're gonna port X. There was something with like the game like not working on the Switch or something. Yeah, yeah. that too. Yeah, and the, and the they say it was gonna be hard to like transfer or transition the gamepad to like the Switch or something like that. I don't know. I, I think what little hopes people did have kind of died with E3 as well. Yeah, it's kind of too far at this point. <laughs> too far mm -hmm. gone for them to like do something about it. Yeah, oh, I was expecting. Well. well, I wasn't really expecting Xenoblade news, but I think it was too early. But mm -hmm. they were retweeting the direct, and they only retweet directs I've heard when there's um they're gonna feature some kind of game, but it turned out completely different from what I expected. And I was like, oh, they did feature something too. technically. Yeah, right? they did show something. I, I was actually like, oh. was not uh, expecting any Xenoblade news. I, yeah. what I really wanted to see was Shin Megami Tensei Five, and then they didn't. Give it to <laughs> that's me. not happening, dude. Yeah, because I was like, what? Give it to me. <laughs> that was like, what else cut they show? Like I was like, wait, Breath of the Wild too? Okay. Yeah, I was so n I, I actually went nuts for that uh, that one. Yes, that I was in a story about having a mental breakdown. I thought that game was finished. Like I thought the story was like concluded. Like where else can they go from there? But I was like, oh wait, there's something more along those lines. Like again and all that other stuff. But I'm not gonna I don't know. It's it's it's, it's be amazing. Yeah. They know, can I... they can always make something new. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. But but it's funny that you mentioned Shin Megami Tensei Five because I remember uh, looking back on when I first saw Xenoblade Two was on the. Um, the Switch Direct in early 2017, I think that was like January 2017, <laughs> that, that was up late. <laughs> I know, and, and that's the thing, though, like, Megami Tensei was one of the first things that they showed on that thing, and there was Octopath Traveler, there was Zelda, there was Mario Odyssey, all of those games have come and gone, and there's no... Shin Megami Tensei! Man, so, I, I man. Know. you know what they're doing? They're too busy <laughs> porting Joker to like... I know! I'm, I hate <laughs> Atlas! I hate Atlas! <laughs> Maybe... <laughs> They have to Maybe remake Joker Persona in 5! They got Maybe a Joker they're... in every single game. He might come in there and see Blade 2 if he wants to, man. I guarantee you, he's gonna be a blade. blade. He's gonna, make a blade he's gonna, be, he's gonna be a gun. Yeah, he's gonna dual wield the knife and the gun. He'll yeah, be just like Fiora. Hey, yeah. Hey, remember, they didn't say they were done. They just didn't have any plans for Blade 2, so he could still come in if he wants to. I, I, oh, I think man. they're actually working on the next game now. I don't think they have yeah, any they plans. Probably, yeah, they're probably still working on the next game at this point. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, maybe maybe you're Atlas right. is busy because they're like you know they're designing more demons for a link to fight in Breath of the Wild 2. Yeah, I don't you're know. You're right. You're right, man. You're right. That's what that's what they're doing. That's exactly they're what not, it is. They're not just trying to make money from Persona games. That's not what they're doing. I feel even bad for the Atlas fans, man. Even though it was outsold by Nier, which is a much, much more niche game. <laughs> oh, good I, times. I, I just fear, well, I don't think Monolith would do this, but what if they, like, <laughs> end up becoming like Atlas and milking their characters to that extent? I, I don't know. No, if, I, doubt, do that. I, doubt will, I doubt it will go to that point, but still, it's like, what if? If they oh, get to that point. I think the most they do is put Cosmos in everything, and that's... Uh... Yeah, that they haven't done that in a while. Well, they did, they did that recently, but... I think that was only like a Cosmos thing. I haven't really seen any other characters. Don't worry, we're gonna get I Cosmos and Smash, right? 
right? Oh, I hope so. Right. I hope so. Right. I hope so. Bandai Namco. <laughs> I hope so. I don't know what other Dude, character me... Namco could add, honestly. Can, is she? Is she a spirit? Uh, in Cosmos? Is she a spirit in um? No, she, I don't no, think she she's is. not a spirit. No. Okay, there's the chances. <laughs> they have risen. <laughs> That's why I, I I don't know like there's something about making fun of Rex. Like, people like are under the impression that I hate Rex and Pirate to be in Smash Bros. But like, I, why? Why would you? Okay, that's well, why I don't, don't I play don't... the game. I hate people like that. Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, but that's the thing though. I know, but I remember saying though, like you know, people like I, and people were under the impression that I didn't want them to be in the game. But I remember predicting the moment that they uh, showed Joker in Smash Bros. I was like, yeah, Rex and Pirate will never be in Smash Bros. And the reason why is just because obviously there's the whole issue of like he, they weren't a very high priority because of development reasons. But also just getting the mechanics down would be tricky. You'd have to make them more like lore and gen, functionally speaking, which would be weird. And it's just that there's so many other characters they want to put in too. It just it's such a low priority, but. That's that's just it though. I'm I hope to be proven wrong though. One thing yeah, I, I honestly I think if they do make a fighter pass two, he has a good chance. But if they do not, then he's not getting in. Uh, yeah. I doubt a fighter pass two. The game has a way too much of a big roster. Like the roster is <laughs> way too big. But... Well, the roster is so big, and Zelda hasn't seen a single change in her in her patch data. Nothing at all. You're right. <laughs> oh, gosh. What did they even do? To, have they done anything to Zelda? I forgot, I forgot you both made they, Zelda. Okay, literally. Literally, just they they nerf uh, they nerfed how much shield damage he does, but that was because that was a universal projectile nerf for all the characters. Otherwise, though, Zelda mains are just kind of twiddling our thumbs right now. Zelda mains, no comment. <sighs> She's I, freaking cute. That's why no I main her. I mean, the, I mean only... the Mii Sword Fighter just to troll with the Red X Rex outfit, honestly. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Mii Sword Fighter Rex is funny. I love it. So oh, yeah, no, funny. always. So, always nobody always uses Mii Fighter Rex. That's the thing. You never except see me, him Except me. I use it. Yeah. I... Well, I don't I know. Use... In my Discord, we have, like, the Rex mirrors, so. I use Nia, too, but Mii Brawler is so booty in the game. I... Yeah. <laughs> Mii Brawler sucks. Oh, my God. I remember He's day one, a friend of mine I mean, told me that. that character. Yeah, I read day one. My friends told me that uh, me, uh, me brawler might be a sleeper character. Is she though? Is she really gonna be though? No, not at all. Gosh, that character got buffs, and the character's still bad. So yeah. Oh just, man, I'm, I'm really tired of Shulk being the only Xeno rep in the game. Like, please ask somebody else. Yeah. I, I, do. I, well, I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I feel I like he's all right, Ad. But Shulk, Shulk is like he's like the Xeno player character. Like he's yeah, he's, like, he's a really like, popular character. Yeah, like that, I think that's the main reason too. So that, that I guess that's the main reason why. I guess so. Like, what more do you need? Okay, exactly. I'm gonna give you me Sword Fighter Rex, and that's Honestly, it. Honestly, I unironically think Cosmos might be more popular total. Maybe. Oh yeah. yeah but people well, have yeah. told me that um, Cosmos. Nobody knows who Cosmos is in the West, so it was like, why would they yeah, add a boat? Do you Probably see Dragon Quest in the game right now? That makes no sense. Why would you even say yeah, that? Dragon right. Quest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Cosmos can get in. I, I hope she get in, but. <laughs> I hope, but I doubt it at this point because I don't care about Banjo or Dragon Quest, but I can't respect their legacy and their games. Yes, I, I think those I of them were don't care choices. about them. Yeah, I think they were. I'm glad they got in. I got they got in for like a lot of people because I know a lot of people wanted them. Especially I was exactly. I was slightly upset Joker got in over like Jack Frost or something. If we were had to have oh, an yeah. Atlas rap, but you know whatever. Whatever. Yeah, oh no, Horny always wins in the end. Yeah. It was like a it was like a compromise in my way in, in my um eyes with um Banjo and Dragon Quest because like the West wanted Banjo and the East wanted Dragon Quest so it's kind of like yeah exactly win win you don't have to yeah. like them but you got no you got they're, they're you clearly wanted. listening when it comes to yeah. like rosters because I remember yeah, like yeah Ridley and K Roll that was kind of a pipe dream back in the day but you're not gonna listen to them yeah. you know they have fans they don't care about us <laughs> no <laughs> they don't care about us you're right no, we, we don't we don't have valid opinions that's just you don't have any opinions you you like the bottom the minority <laughs> bottom feeders. Hey, you think oh, you're gosh. popular just because two got popular? No, you don't deserve anything. Take your <laughs> Mii Fighter characters and yeah, so, that. Take the Mii <laughs> Fighters and make way for the much more popular franchise. Yeah, take, take, arms. Your spirits, yes. take your spirits. Take your spirits. What else? Dude? We already, I do we already like the have spirits, the anime though. sword game. We have seven Fire Emblem characters. We don't no need Switch Zeno avatars. Characters. No Switch avatars. I'm so mad about that. Oh, uh, yeah. I actually don't, I don't know, know why like, we should not have Switch avatars. That's interesting. There's like a bunch of avatars I've never expected, and we have no Xenoblade avatars. <laughs> tell me, tell me why. I like Toad. Yes, tell me, tell me why Ultimate has all these profile pictures and avatars, but you can't put them on the Switch, like the main home console, but you got a game with all these other profile pictures and stuff like that. But like every single game, every single franchise. I'm like, dude, come on. Why are you giving Mario... <laughs> 
all these other av- okay i'm gonna go on with this because i'm mad as hell right now <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm really i'm mad i'm still mad about that to this day it's so annoying like dude like they even they even rep xenoblade on the twitter sometimes like with um new year's pirate oh i love like, that one that was such a like good one 30 likes and you could tell people love xenoblade too so why don't you have the avatars why, <laughs> <laughs> why don't you have the switch avatars I actually Ooh. remember making a joke about how, like, if they had the Xenoblade avatars, you'd be able to ascertain what kind of person they are based on what they use. You're so, right. obviously, it's pretty obvious You're who right. they are if they use someone like Nia, Mithra, Pyra. It's pretty obvious who they are. But you know so they're a good person. You know they're a good person if they're using Akos. Oh. <laughs> that's how you, that's how you right. determine a good person. Right. If you use oh. Akos, they're a good person. Yep. Right. I can't explain it. There's just a science to it. That's all okay. I can say. And then you're like 14 or younger and male if you use Zeke. Just gonna throw that out there. Science. I'm gonna admit the profile picture all day and night. All right. Well, how about <laughs> the, the haze picture though? Oh my. Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. Why are you haze now? I almost forgot about it too. So you brought it up. <laughs> what happened? I want to know the story. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know if there's actually really exciting story behind it. Okay, so YouTube, it's still going to be Mithra, so you guys have no idea what Blunt is talking about, but on Discord, I changed my profile picture from uh, Joseph Joestar to Hayes, and I used to be Mithra on here too. So uh, yeah. Blunt's, Blunt's is very curious as to why I am Hayes now. <laughs> so, um, how do I explain this? It's a meme. No, it is not a meme. Okay. It's so. like how people went from Elon Musk to Keanu Reeves in the matter of two days. You're right. Okay, but here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Mithra is my favorite character, right? Because let's look. Hayes, Hayes doesn't really have a character at all. I'm beyond. She's like a plot point in uh, in Xenoblade Two, and in uh, Torna, she doesn't really get much time to shine or really do anything. Except but, look pretty. But Hayes is really adorable. You know, like good Christian girl, and that's what I'm into IRL. So you know, <laughs> pure hard waifu. Makes sense. Waifu. That's it. That's the answer. Uh, she's, she's basically Aerith from Final Fantasy VII. She's a staff-wielding healer that uses wind abilities, and she stays away from katanas. Yep. She has her moments. Like, she has her moments. Like, with Mithra, like, she roasts the hot. Yeah, and she's the Oh, yeah, no, it, no, it's that. great when she does it. It's great when she does it, because you know, she's, like, the last person you expect. And you also find out she's afraid of ghosts, which is yes. really weird. <laughs> she's, she's, <laughs> she's, she's pure and then she and loves adorable. love stories. Pure and adorable. How can you not like that? There's yes. literally no way to dislike Haze. If you dislike she's Hayes, like, please unsubscribe from my channel right now and never talk to me again. Thank you. Dislike Hayes because she's unplayable and dead. Well, okay. I can't, I can't, even, I can't even like speak for myself because I went from Nia to Mithra at one point. Look, like, all I'm gonna say, all I'm gonna say is that there are six blades you can control in, on all, all of Torna and Xenoblade Two, and Hayes is one of them. So you cannot control yeah. Pyra. So I don't want to hear anything. <laughs> oh, poor Pyra, man. Dang. <laughs> I thought you would be able to like. No, I thought Pyro would at some point appear in Torna. Well, not like towards the end. I thought you'd be able to like interact with her. But I was when like, oh. she was there, though, that was really nice. Like yeah, that was a really nice touch. Like the ending of Tor- Torna was really good. I yeah, like no, that. Torna's ending surprised me. Torna. Like I, I wasn't expecting to feel that much emotions. I actually meant to do like a, a video to sum up my thoughts of it as soon as I beat it. I beat it like the day after it came out, and it was just nothing but emotions. I actually couldn't speak just because of how sad I was about the whole thing. Yeah, I, so remember, was, I beat it literally the day it came out, and I didn't. I didn't make uh, a thoughts video. I was like, okay, I gotta rush to make my gameplay videos out. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, that's the life of a Zeno team, my friends. That's, You're right. um, oh boy. Yeah, I was thinking if two would be like a better, will have a better story if I would have played Torna first. In a way, I was always thinking about that. That was always mm-hmm. on my mind. Like, how would I see two if I played Torna first? Yes. Oh, well, Torna so what do you think? Made everything so much better for me. But it made Mithra such a better character for me, man. I didn't even oh, yeah. like into. Oh, I couldn't stand Mithra at all. I, I, I hated man. Mithra. She's, she's annoying sometimes. Man. I, I, didn't, I didn't hate her, but I liked her. Man. Like, that was the thing, though. I couldn't, I couldn't corner, stand man. her for the majority of the thing until, like, maybe the ending of Chapter 7, where finally she comes to grips with who she is. But then it's Torna that really made her feel a lot... Ironically, she was more alien in this one, but that's what made her feel more grounded in retrospect, because now we see that she's actually genuinely scarred about being what she is, and all of her whininess in Metal Blade actually made sense. You're right. Yeah, so, anyways, like... I don't know, like, when it came to Torna, uh, while we're waiting here, uh, Torna, looking back on it in terms of gameplay, like, what did you personally think in comparison to how it was with Xenoblade 2? 
Um, me personally, I yeah. I think the gameplay was better at the start, but they kind of streamlined the entire process. But I do think it got weaker towards the. Uh, I think two's post game gameplay is a lot better just because there's so much more like customization with all the different blades you can equip, and the mm -hmm. combat in two really speeds up towards the end to where the combat in Torna no longer feels faster in a sense, you know, and. Mm. Uh, but I do think Torna had a much stronger start, giving you access to basically all the blade combos and driver consoles and chain attacks, like, instantly almost. So I think yeah. that was uh, a really nice touch it had. And I, I really did uh, appreciate... I like the talent arts and stuff that they added, and, like, all the like, No, that was really cool. I like driver combos, man. I think they really made it way better in the game. It's, the system in general was, like, way better than what it was. Like, you could oh, yeah. actually, like, utilize launch and all that other stuff way more easier. I actually found that, like, outside of Laura randomly destroying all of her life bodies and her talents, like, the AI was really good at following up at stuff like that, which I really, really enjoyed. I'm glad I think you that had was my AI biggest in the ones. game, too. Oh, yeah. So it was just like, it was just really cool to see all of that flow together. I liked how, even though there weren't very many super bosses or, or uniques, I really enjoyed the fact that each of them had a very specific tactic that you had to use in order to beat them. You just had to find it and then really explore what your blades can do. Really, really liked that one. Yeah, I wasn't really expecting too much from Torna. I thought, well, I I didn't know it's like it's like a small kind of world, but I, I thought Torna was gonna be way bigger than what I saw. Oh, I was yeah. like, wait, it's kind of smaller than I expected, but it, it is kind of big. But I thought it was gonna be like way bigger. Than yeah, you would have thought it would have been like yeah. continent size, like all the yeah. other continents are. Instead, we got like a half of a continent. Yeah, for each one that's there. Yeah, it, it was so it was so decent. It was just just a side story. I wasn't really expecting too much, but I thought yeah. it was gonna be way bigger than what I saw. I, I think the biggest controversy is around in Torn. I think people, by and large, like the fans, really enjoyed the story and the characterization of all the characters. Whether that's Laura, uh, I really liked how they um, how they did Laura. Actually, she was really really nicely written. But then when it came to just community, community was definitely the thing that was, will make or break the experience for people. I liked it though. I personally, I love doing yeah, this. It was a step up. Definitely I, I think the, yeah, the side quest in Torna reminded me a lot of X, and I think that was a good thing for sure. They felt a lot more meaningful to do. Uh-huh. Because I, I, I think, think that was the biggest complaint for a lot of people that I know. But yeah. People hated the um, quest. I think it says you're forced to do it towards the end. That's the main Yeah, if you thing. weren't so forced, people would have yeah. accepted it with open arms, wouldn't they? I think the quests like... were a lot better, but I do think making it required was a, an issue. Mm. I didn't really mind it, but I could see where people were coming from with it. It, it really did make it look like, like, okay, yeah, we're padding the game, we're making it so that Malos is going to wait for us. I'm um, just like, cool? <laughs> They're doing it because they just want more playtime. Like, exactly. Like, the, yeah, yeah. It, there was no real urgency. It was just, okay, now this is going to happen, and then when you beat all these side quests, you can unlock this next quest, and then everyone's going to die. <laughs> it was, it felt kind of lazy at first, but I was like, eh, it's whatever. It's going to play through the game. It's not really it that big of a deal. playability to it, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is what it is. <laughs> I didn't really mind it. I, I thought it was cool. I was like, cool, okay, I'm going to do these quests. I'm going to remember out the game anyway. I was going to do them anyway, so I was like, oh, might as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. there, was, there was no huge issue. I just, I was just, what, I, I was, I'm getting stuttering now. Okay. What was I about to say? <laughs> okay, yeah, I was a little annoyed initially when I played it just because, uh, I was really trying to figure out the entire story and, like, it interrupted me doing the story. But, yeah. I think second or third playthroughs, you don't really mind it as much. Cause you <laughs> you had a know. huge roadblock. Yeah. So I was no, I, next. Yeah. So I remember no, I was honestly, trying to rush through the game because I didn't want any spoilers for it, like, at all. <laughs> see, see, that was the other thing, too. <laughs> I, like, if you're the kind of person, like, you and I, we want to get through this game as soon as possible. Uh, that's very noticeable that, yeah, there's this massive roadblock in our way. Um... But again, it depends on like why you get into Torna in the first place. I think by and large, though, it really does enhance how I feel about 2, uh, the core Xenoblade 2, in that I had a much more appreciation for Mithra, I had much more appreciation for for Laura as a character, and so I think it goes for, well, I've always liked Jin. Jin is one of my favorite blades ever. And then you also had more appreciation for Rex, because you understand what Rex actually represents for Mithra following the traumatic events of the end, which was just really cool. That's why I like Rex so much, actually. No, I think they've basically fleshed out everyone, like especially the people so that appear in two as everyone well. Like, so much better. A like, Aegeon, you understand everything. Aegeon got a huge buff to his character, you know? Yeah, oh yeah. Aegeon. Like, he had oh, no character in the in the base awesome, game. Dude. And then he had like some really cool moments in Torna. 
Yeah, it's... <laughs> I just love the fact when you look back at Torna and then you look back at 2, you notice how there's that amazing scene where all of them are fighting against Malos in uh, in Oresco. Oh, that scene was hype! Yeah, it was such a good scene. scene. But then it, scene. It, it became a little bit less hype to me when I realized that Nia was able to do just fine on her own. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of like two. That's so funny. And yeah. that was what and that was when he had the Monado and everything. Oh my, I was like, wait, Nia's broken. Hello. Yeah, she's actually OP. <laughs> but anyways, no, honestly, um like it really did a lot to just regain my appreciation for a lot of it. And uh, I, think, I think that's part of the reason why the story was so good. Yeah, they, I think it was mostly the voice acting too. The voice acting got way better. Yes, the Torna, Torna yeah, voice acting acting got a way lot better, better too. Yeah, but I listened to both the uh, the Japanese and the English, and man, they both did so good. But for the English, I uh, definitely want to applaud Laura for that one, because she did so nicely being, like, kind of the last-minute protagonist. It was so cool. Laura was really refreshing as a protagonist, man, I ain't gonna lie. Like, mm -hmm. she, was, she was way older than I expected. I was like, she's 27? Yeah, she's 27. When I first found it out, I was like, wait. I was like, okay, I haven't had the character, like, well, I didn't even play X at that point, but it was like, Elma yeah. in a way. Elma's... So I was like, that's really cool. Elma's kind of like, well, how old is Elma? 28, 27? Uh, not technically. I won't say anything Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, no, because she's a, she's a robot. I mean, no, she's a something else. But you know, the thing about Laura, I think that may, was the most refreshing for me, was also because she, being who she is, enhances Jin's character, who was a character that I just love so much. But the cool thing about Laura and Jin's dynamic is one that I really enjoyed, because it was a very... Like, even though it was a very affectionate kind of um, thing that they had, but it was very platonic at the same time. They, there was nothing beyond, like, that's the thing, though. Like, even though it never was romantic, they still genuinely cared. They genuinely had the desire for one of them to have the very best in their lives and how that drives Jin to do the things that he does eventually towards the end of the game. It's just really refreshing. You don't see very many girl, guy, or pretty much like with any gender combination, really, that they're super close, but it doesn't have to be romantic. It just means that they genuinely care, and that's what makes them such rich characters, and why I enjoyed Laura so much because of what she does for Jin. Man, Jin is such a good character. Oh my lord, I love that's Jin. He's awesome. Like He's Jin. freaking amazing. Jin, I don't really Anyone? care about Jin and two, but obviously why, but once Torna came, I was like, whoa, Jin is good, man. I yeah. love this character. I love him. No, like, my friend, I think my favorite thing about Jin... And stuff like that, man. <laughs> My favorite thing about Jin is that a friend of mine's a physicist, and he was listening to Jin explain his powers about how he like freezes particles to freeze time, and he, it oh, just yeah, made his head hurt. Yeah, it, it made his head hurt so much because he's a physicist. He understands how this stuff works, and that was not. But that's okay. So it doesn't have <laughs> to make sense. It doesn't exactly. have to make it's sense. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that man, dude I was like, I, it was like, I control all the elementary particles. I was like, what does that mean? Yeah, dude, who <laughs> I love his monologues too. Like, I, I said this in the previous, um, in in the previous uh, podcast with Xander, I was saying about how like Jin is like a walking, talking, two-dimensional anime trope, but they made it. They, they just they executed him so well with the whole you know stabbing Rex in the back, telling him it's nothing personal. <laughs> with the katana. and there's the oh. fact that it's like we embody the cruel nature of this world. Why are we the that, slaves? And that, that was my masters. first impression of Rex. I mean, not Rex. I'm that. Jen. Jen yeah, was like, such a what is this thing edgy character? <laughs> he's my face. such a cool character. Oh my gosh, there's everything then, about him. That's the thing. That's what makes Torna so good, man. It changes everything. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. How I saw really, two change really, when Torna came out. Like, he just changed exactly. the game. Hayes went, I from, a, Hayes went from a plot device to make you like not like Jin into like becoming like a very tragic character after she like basically lost all of her memories and everything. Oh, I hate I hate Hayes' story. Not because I'm not saying it was bad, but it was just, I just hate how it ended for her, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. I didn't it's like it. I wanted more. And, I wanted all the reality. It doesn't feel really? like, after playing Torn, it doesn't yeah. feel like Jin's as much of a jerk anymore for, like, killing her, mm -hmm. because, you know, after, like, she's basically being, like, enslaved to a mouth that's, like, she never wanted to in Torna. Yeah, that, that was his way of, like, freeing her. That was the only way. I love how they add insult to injury at the end of, uh, at the end of Torna, right before the battle with Malos, and, like, uh, Hayes mentions that she sympathized with Malos, because she, like, she would hate to be a blade that belongs yeah, to a Malos. Can't imagine being a blade. Are you freaking kidding me, writers? Yeah. They did that on oh. purpose. They did that on purpose. So, so, there's a lot of things they did on purpose. Like, you could tell they were paying attention when they made uh, Torna's writing. It was so good. I had to pause the game when I read that, too. I, I just thought <laughs> to myself, they, they really just write that into the game. Evil. <laughs> Absolutely evil. <laughs> oh, I always have moments like that, too. Like, I just pause the game and think. I was like, wait. <laughs> come on, man. Who just you can't happened? do that to me. 
I, th I think for I me, the one that world. made me really stop and think was when Hugo says, don't forget me. During the oh, yeah, bro. Yeah, don't that. forget me. <laughs> like, are you kidding me, you guys? This Dude, is I don't think that was planned. They put that in there intentionally. That was... Oh, man. They removed... I still still said they removed that. That was so funny. Especially with the, the, um, the challenge course, there's this one quest called... I think it's called... Yes, don't on the me, ship. Like that. There's that one, that one slide... Yeah, that one challenge quest. That that was that only quest that had that um that meme in there. Wait, did it really get that popular? I was like, dang. <laughs> I was like, why that... did they keep... I was like, why did they remove the quotes in the first place? All if they acknowledge the meme. All I'm going to say about the uh, Gen Challenge Mode mission is that it's the worst thing in the entire game. It is very not <laughs> fun to do at all. Well, is it for a world record? No, oh, I, I don't even do it. I, like, that's the only challenge I never got on the leaderboards. I was like, I'm not doing this. This is, is, this is a, terrible. They did a leaderboard for Arm Challenge? Yeah, Ooh. you didn't know? Hold on, let me link it to you right now. I got, like, I've never seen it before. I don't think I ever used it. <laughs> I just done the challenges. That's crazy. Yeah, I, I just do really, really fast and say, you know what? I've peaked, and now I can Man. move on with my life. Here's the link, Blunds. <laughs> See, obviously you don't pay attention to my channel, Blunds. Now I know. Damn. Now Dude, know. like, the thing is, how I found your channel, like, I wasn't even trying to find it. It just came up to my feed. Like, I was looking for information, like, how to beat oh, yeah. this one quest. And then you came up. I was like, wait, this guy's kind of good. This dude, look at these damn videos. He make, he beating all these things and no problem. I'm like, how are you doing this? <laughs> Especially with oh, Poppy yeah. QTP. I didn't even know Poppy QTP was that good until I watched that video, that one video about you. <laughs> That's a really nice one. So broken, man. I have. Uh, I always have my equipment at the end of all my videos that I do challenges and stuff, though. So you can, yeah. you can see what I do. Get us where I discovered Mithra was broken with her dang Crit Hill stuff. That stuff oh, yeah. I didn't even know about, That's... man. I was like. I even knew you could do that kind of stuff. Outdated, that's really outdated. Outdated. No, no, see, that's just the nature of making guy videos. Like, usually the moment you upload something, it's outdated. But again, because some people are playing the games at different times and at different parts in their progression, they have a much bigger appreciation that you don't have. It's so like, you know, maybe they don't care about Crit Heal Mithra, or you don't care about Crit Heal Mithra, but then someone that stumbles upon it is like, this is the coolest thing ever. I want this. I want this. But yeah, Blunds, if you check that link, you'll see I have the record for like 90% of the challenges. Man, and you're like I have video, with this guy, I have video for all of them. <laughs> and oh, you'll yeah. see the Titan Battleship Assault. I don't have any records for that one because that mission sucks. <laughs> it's terrible. It's too good. It's, it's awful. Too good. You're like competing with this Grin guy. See, who is this? Oh, I see oh, oh that's, uh, yeah, that's Connor. He does stuff and also. But uh, the uh -huh. main mission is to take down Japan when they try to beat me and bring your chaos, and I've successfully defended myself a lot of times. <laughs> actually, there's actually one record I have I have not uploaded yet that's on that leaderboard. But for the Cloud King and bring your chaos. See, look, at one point I was thinking of like 100 percent in Xenoblade 2 completely, but that all changed when Challenge Mode came. I was like, hell no, I'm not doing this. Oh, you're yeah. not doing bring your chaos? Why not? <laughs> no, that stuff is way. I can't even. I can't even do what's it called? Hard, normal. That's what I meant. Normal. I can't even do normal sometimes, man. That stuff is so hard. <laughs> I, I gotta grind. So I got other things to do, man. I'm sorry. What do you mean? You yeah. can you can kill the the, the the 50 million HP enemy in 50 and, seconds, dude. And I got other things to do, man. Wait, really? That's new. <laughs> Do you not you see my? Oh my God! Blood, you don't even, crap, you don't even check my Twitter. Dang! <laughs> I do watch some of your videos, bro, but not all of them, honestly. Hold on, you should I see this on my one. Feed. You should see this one. Retweet it right now. I get need more popularity, okay? Here. <laughs> <laughs> you say retweet it? Are you serious? There you go. Do you know? Yeah, like, so here right now. What do you need? What do you mean? Oh my Lord, Dan, it's actually true. Yeah, yes. No, it's really, really good. What do you mean? I'm not lying to you. Dang! Oh, let me skip this video. See, that's why, that's you why I like Elma so much. Elma's very good in chain. Like, I love how they gave her overdrive and she's, like, better in chain attacks on normal mode. Like, it's oh, better to just use a chain attack. You had this one video where you were using normal-ass blades. I'm like, how are you doing that? Oh, you, you normal blades? blades? Yeah, there's common yeah, blades common in that blades. video, too. Oh, my God. Yeah, I see them right here on Mori. Oh the, the the main ability that common blades have that can be useful are ultimate combo and uh, orb master. Orb master is a very important part of these missions. Ooh, it basically master. gives everyone that. the same ability that they have in Torna to like put blades on every or like orbs whenever you use a special. It's so nice. Yeah, it is very. I just nice. noticed this one video you made about saying Nia wasn't good. Oh, <laughs> oh <wait. laughs> that that kind of made me mad. I was like, <laughs> he, might, he, might, he, might, he, might, he might be true. Right, he might be telling the truth to you. He might be real. <laughs> Dropping those truth bombs. Oh, um, I knew that video was gonna get a lot of views though. That was the important thing, right? <laughs> yeah, cause I saw it too, man. 
<laughs> that was oh, a wait. Yeah, I, I like, like this. I, know, I, like I, knew, I knew there was going to be people getting on there being like, no, she's great, man. You're just bad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you wanna get, you, let's get into some of Blunza's favorite blades while we're at oh, it. Oh, yes. Well, well, let's copy Pokemon. Let's let's po uh, copy the Poketubers and let's name our top five. <laughs> our top five. <laughs> Do we, do oh, we exclude the main blades, or do we no, just you know, can say whoever you want. anything you want? Yeah, like for me, like Jin's one of my favorites, and he's on a main blade, mm -hmm. so it's all good. Man, if I was gonna list my favorite blades, there would really just be the main. Just the mains, mostly. eh? Mostly. Okay, yeah, then who's mostly. not outside of the mains? Then who you like? Outside of the mains, I I, I like Kasanji. I'm not saying it just because Lee's here, but I like Kasanji. <laughs> oh, he's, saying, no, honestly, he's saying he's like saying it because you're here. I like Kasanji. Who else? I gotta think about this. Oh no! Absolutely, there's, so, there's so many of them. Oh my lord! And that's kind of the issue. There is just that yeah. many of them. But just most of them, I just forget about them. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, who who do I really like? Because Cassandra stood out to me a lot. I like her Blade Quest. She was funny. Oh, Blade Quest. Oh, I know. I loved yeah. her DLC Blade Quest, the one where it's her oh, and yeah, yeah, having yeah. the hot spring party. I loved that because I remember reading the description of that one. Wait a minute, this is kind of baby, don't you think? And then once you get to it, oh. Well played, well played. We get to look at a sheep's bum the entire time. Awesome. <laughs> that was such a good quest. <laughs> because, because I don't think I did that. Oh gosh, it's fantastic. Basically, the whole end is just Sheba getting cock blocked. Oh, nice. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I, I just she was probably my least favorite blade in the entire game. I despise Sheba. <laughs> no, for oh, me, I love Sheba oh. because of I, I guess it was, for me it was sentimentality reasons. Because remember, like I was trying to get through the game as soon as I could, and she was the strongest thing that I had at the time. And oh, I figured, you, had, you know, let's you had some really weak blades. Oh yeah, well no, but then, well, I, I didn't understand the value of blades too, right? Yeah, because I, I just know, started. A blade, I think everybody would like who I knew, who I know loved in Xenoblade Two is Ursula. What an amazing Ursula. blade. Amazing. Yes. Well, Amazing okay. With the Man. People give Ursula Amazing. way too much flag for that quest, but it's yeah. actually like the most useful quest in the entire game because it allows yeah, you to max you out. Yeah. It allows you to max out people's blade charts. That, that you I just liked her use. because switching into her lets you heal the entire party. You could actually survive. Um, what's his name? Ophion's beam attack by switching at just the right time. Yeah, a blade I didn't expect to like is Dahlia. Dahlia? I, I okay. I yeah. Actually, I actually kind of like Dahlia. I like. No, I, I do. I do like. How was the character? I know the controversy around that character. That character kind of pushed me away from Xenoblade Two at the beginning. Yeah. Because it was like, what is this? It was a, it was an overblown thing. It was a very overblown. Yeah, it was very really overblown. Actually, very overblown. It was like all over my tweet. I mean, my yeah. my timeline. Exactly. No, it, it was just so overblown because, again, the camera angle was weird, too. Yes. I mean, yeah, sure, people have qualms about the design, but the thing is, though, the whole point of Dahlia's character, and if you look at her affinity quest, is that, or just look at her personality traits, is that her whole thing is being able to look beyond appearances, and that's what she encourages everyone to do. Clearly, people that make fun of her appearance just haven't played the game. You're right. <laughs> You're exactly True, that right. Was me. That Amen. was me. Amen. That was, that was a very good point not... there. No, but I, I really like Dahlia's too. Um, actually, I kind of found that her design grew on me because I was like, yeah, design looks kind of stupid, whatever. But then after a while, it's like, ah, oh, so you put that together. To do that. Yeah. Yeah, but after, after a while, it's like, well, they went for unique. Yeah. And like, you see like the alternative design of the art book, right? Most of these designs look really cool. Mm -hmm. And the alternative design for Dahlia looks really nice too. But it was kind of like, like a kind of like a typical, like, JRPG character from like a northern region where it's snowing all the time, which isn't bad, but I, you know, Dahlia is just this weird, like, what the heck is this? Yeah, I look through my art, but like, it's the Bible. Honestly, I'm looking at that thing every day, man. I love this <laughs> art, it's so good. I wish I could understand yeah, Japanese. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, there's like dialogue in it, man. I oh, wish yeah, I could read Japanese art, I can't. Yeah, that's right. I'm sure someone's hard translated it online somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. Yeah, no, I did not order the art book. I actually don't have like any merch besides the game. I actually I did buy a controller, mm -hmm. um, a Mithra controller that someone custom made for me, but that's like has practical use. So yeah, I guess that's a little different. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing about me. Like, like I have like a legit Kitsune mask, but it's not it's not the same as Cassandra's. I just I just kind of wear it whenever I'm bored around the house. <laughs> Nice. Just wear it walking around. Nice. <laughs> Start walking around the yeah. house, throwing out the trash with the Kitsune mask on my face. It's awesome. Yeah. Really I'm trying awesome. to think of a blade I didn't like at all. Like I just hated them, but Shiba. I really can't. Nia. Shiva. No. Shiva. 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 Um, let's see. Shiba, Shiba, 
Wait, what What about she? She was the one with the bat sub, right? Yes. Yeah, the bat sub. And... Why, why do you hate her? Wait, what about oh, her? She's her? awful. How do you like her? I don't like her, but I just want to know. <laughs> I don't I don't like her or hate her. I'm just uh, kind of neutral about her. <laughs> she has one of the most like insufferable personalities in the entire game, for one thing. Like, everything she says is annoying. Uh, she hates men, so that's one thing. Oh, yeah, she's all about money. Yeah, that one yeah and she's very superficial. Like she yeah. likes money. Okay, I can see why. She I can see why. Yeah, likes sense. money. Well, until you finish her her own what's it called her personal quest, so then you she has that turnaround. Uh, I mean, that's. I don't really like a Brona at all. Oh, <laughs> oh man, oh, Brona is so weird. They're both voiced by the same person in English too. That's yeah. the best nice. part. Nice. <laughs> Naomi McDonald, extremely talented voice actress. Like her, her range is impeccable. She does a great job of making me hate her characters. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> how you know she did a good job. <laughs> Oh man! Because Abrona was supposed to be like really insufferable as well. Yeah. Um. Who else on this list do I not like? Uh. I think Florin was kind of dumb. Florin. <laughs> I love Florin because of the comments that I get. Florin. Because I, I'm just uh, Florin's the one. Um, the trap. The, the, the trap. The trap one. Yeah. The trap. Yeah. Uh, because I get a lot of people. Uh, freaking out in my comments for my Florin video just because I revealed very early on that Florin was a boy. Nobody didn't know that. Well, I didn't know it at first, but still, it was kind of yeah. like on the iffy side. <laughs> a lot of people were freaking out in the comments. It was great. I didn't it's know. Awesome. I didn't know if it was a boy or a girl, so I was like, it could be anything. <laughs> so I just left it at that, and then oh, I yeah. found out. The Merc mission. <laughs> the Merc mission revealed to it. it for me when I tried to send yeah. out a Merc mission. <laughs> oh man, who else yeah. do we got? If I if I had to pick like a blade that I just didn't like, it'd be hard because I, I I'm I'm one of those weird people that are easy to please. Yeah, I that's, think there's a lot of they didn't like make many like, bad characters per se. Oh, right? I guess in terms of, in terms of ones that have like almost no opinion on. Oh no, 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 that's not true. No, there's one I was heavily disappointed, Perdido. Oh yeah, Perdido. I I completely forgot Perdido's name. For those guys that don't remember who Perdido is, can't blame you. That was Patroka's blade, um, in the in the New Game Plus DLC. Now yeah, the thing about Perdido yeah. is that he looks amazing in cutscenes. He wielded all the weapons, and all everything about him is that he's a master of weapons. No, he's an ether cannon, and not a very good one. Yeah, he's it's, he's kind of, he's uh, really bad. He's really bad. Gosh. Basically, all of the um Torna blades are kind of like forgotten. They, yeah. They Mitha killed them if you forgot about them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she actually like, did. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. All of them Man, are actually like... dead in uh, canonically. I, I like how Mithra's afraid of roofs. Yes, we don't want to. We don't want to <laughs> crash the roof, so I can't summon Siren here, guys. That's Sorry. A, that was, that's kind of so, so weird. Man, <laughs> just shoot through the roof. <laughs> you have a name, Siren, man. Uh, oh, I think wow. as far as my uh, favorite blades, just looking at the list here, I like Cutie Pie a lot. I like Fiora. Oh, I love Cutie Pie. Uh, I like Mithra, obviously. I like Haze. She's not on the list because Torna. I like Haze a lot, actually. So. Um, Cosmos and Telos, but they don't really count. Um, Ooh, I like Telos. I remember, I remember like seeing Telos for the first time, and like just looking at her passive and using her in practice. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is just, this feels wonderful. It's not as useful as you want it to be because having people die is never really optimal, you know. <laughs> oh no, no, for me, I don't care. Like I, I've killed Tyrant Titan Kuradil like a million <laughs> times. I'm pretty sure one of me just soloing the Kuradil will be just fine. Yeah. <laughs> It's really um, nice. I like Dagus. I like Petroka. I like Corvus. Oh, I, I like love Dagus's Dagus design. Dagus, oh, Dagus is so funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's a really, yeah, he's really well done. I feel like I just like all the good blades, honestly. Just looking at the list, <laughs> the yeah. ones that you, those are the ones that you play with. Right? Yes, honestly, you're right. <laughs> I was like, why would you add Fiora to this list? I mean, come on. <laughs> well, I just yeah. saw her on my my list, so yeah, the, yeah. the blades. And when I go down the list, I like, yeah, I don't really like these characters that much. You don't ever use them. <laughs> yeah, you never. <laughs> Who yeah, was the, that? The worst blade in the game. Who was that? That that justice blade. Who who was the worst? Oh, no, the worst Godfrey. in the game is Finch. The worst is Finch, not Godfrey. Is it really Finch? That yes, was Godfrey. Godfrey. Godfrey has eighty percent damage against higher level enemies, and he has two ox core slots. Finch has literally nothing in one ox core slot. <laughs> Finch is awful, and oh, she's also Finch a terrible. Gets everything, weapon. man. How do you even bring Finch to combat? <laughs> She's not everything. only is she the worst weapon type, but she has one ox core slot, and she has like nothing on her skill tree that makes her anywhere remotely good. Like a common shield hammer is better than Finch. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you get the cool RNG roll the bones kind of. Oh, if you use this attack, there's a small chance that you might get to do it again. Nice. Yeah, for to do another three damage. Ah, <laughs> oh, it's great. <laughs> 
See, that's, that's, that's kind of my thing about shield hammers. I remember, like, noticing very early on the problem with shield hammers is just that tanking things in a game where healing doesn't matter that much really sucks. Yeah. Yeah, oh, thing I like about it too as well is like it's like the Smash Bros. Because it has like all the characters from like every single well, not all the games, but like almost every single Xeno game, like Cosmos, Flora, yeah. Shulk, all in the same game. That's the crazy thing about Xeno Bay 2 to me. I was not expecting that at all. Oh yeah, bringing everyone. Yeah, and, DLC. Also, the variety of artists, that's the part that blew me away. Yes. The variety of artists, oh boy. I mean, say what you will about, you know, like any of the Torna Blades, they were all designed by Tetsuya Nomura, who is currently working on Final Fantasy VII Remake, so that's awesome. Um, yeah, so that's why Petroka and uh, Tifa look the exact same. I made, I, I actually <laughs> exactly made, same. okay, I made a video oh release today God. where I put Tifa as the thumbnail because it was about Petroka. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and the same thing goes for uh, for what's it called for Jin. Uh, so again, again, same designer. Jin, yeah. I see, and Malos, now I think about it. Jin and yeah, like all those characters. It's not quite the same. Jin and Sephiroth is not quite the same. Like, no, no, it's, it's more like a compound between identical. Cloud and Sephiroth. When you yeah. mix them together, you get Jin. That's true. And that then, makes sense. Yeah, so like you get all that. Then you also get the guy that um, that drew Sora online for Corvin. There was like just like a lot of different things that we have here. Oh, also another personal favorite of mine was, yeah, well, Cassandra, Fate Grand Order. Freaking awesome. No comment Big on Grand gotcha. Order. No comment on gotcha. You don't. You don't play gotcha. I hate gotcha. You don't play gotcha. Oh, you gotta gotcha. die. Honestly, you know. honestly, on, you you're money. actually not missing out that much. You're saving a lot of money this way. Oh yeah, you <laughs> see that as a person. You are. You're saving yourself from like crippling your life. Just like I remember, I like initially tried he like Fire Emblem Heroes. I played it for like a day. I was like, this sucks. Yeah, no, I'll get it. I'll get it off topic. Epi Heroes does suck, so okay. you're, you're right it about does. That. But I still play it. But the reason why, and this is completely off topic, but I've actually been saving ever since Choose Your Legend was a thing. I've been saving my orbs, and I did the calculations. Apparently, I'm saving at least eight hundred thirty-six dollars Canadian by just saving on free yeah. orbs. Where's so that Xenoblade gotcha game? That's Xenoblade Honestly, two. Honestly, Psy 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 oh, you're right. I keep forgetting about that. The dang corpse. It's not. It's thing. not the same yeah. though, because you can infinitely it, it, it's you can not grind the same. for it. Not giving so. up money. Yeah. yeah. I know, but it, but it's the thrill of Gotcha. That's that's why I like Xenoblade 2's um like blade system yes. so much. Is that the ability for you to be able to get something random, and then that changes your playthrough yes. for the first time? I really like that. I like that randomness and the fact that you don't have to pay out of your pocket to do it. I don't it. think I've I'm seen one person who liked the um Coral Crystal stuff. I'm gonna be I honest, I think <laughs> casually it's decent, but it yeah. infuriates me to no end when I need field skills for speedruns, and I try yeah, to see, that, that, see that, that would be the main thing, but then for, for someone that. playing it for the first time, like, you know, someone that unlocks, say, like, you know, a, like, a, a Zenobia as their first pull, that would be really, really cool for them, whereas someone else would have the potential to, like, get, like, Dagas first, which is kind of weird, but it's cool to see that later Dagas becomes amazing. Yeah, I think... It's, uh, it's kind of like that. I, and I think I, they did a good job of giving you enough, like, really strong blades guaranteed, especially if you got the DLC. Mm -hmm. But even if you didn't get the DLC, they give you, like, Wolfric for free, and he's, like, the best main story blade as far as the Oh, yeah, damage. he's a good one. So. Yeah, and I kid you not, man. It took me two weeks to get Cosmos <laughs> towards the end of the game. Two two weeks of grinding and summoning. Oh, uh, oh yeah. you have actual that intentional grinding, huh? Very not in, probably... That was not very efficient if it took you two weeks. I'm just going to say dude, that. Dude, I was using <laughs> legendary coral crystals. Like, I was farming from, well, was it very efficient? Because I, I couldn't do the um the Arden. I had to do the territory yeah. of Robert. Because that was the only yeah. thing I had. Reminder, you but, like, like I was using the right. I was yeah, I was using the right methods, but I still wasn't getting here for some reason. So I just gave up at one. You can point. get like ninety nine legendaries later. in about twenty minutes, though. And if you have like maxed out luck and justice, you it's, it would take an average of like hundred and seventy pulls to get her. And oh yeah, my God. <laughs> yeah, no, it should I, not I take more me, than like two hours. I, well, that's the thing though. That was before people finessed the system. But for me, I, I remember it took me about three days. And by the way, each of these three days were like what, maybe like four hours of grinding. So well, okay. What hours. I will say is, the, like the first month or two, the game was out. You couldn't skip the core summoning scene, and that way. See that? See no? See that was my that thing. Was, was I literally good. unlocked all the blades before they patched that. Yeah, me too. That did waste a lot <laughs> so, of time. I forgot about so that. I, but yo, we get we get to have a veterans discount, my friends. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. I do remember like not being able to skip it. That did waste a lot of additional time when like uh, trying to grind for blades. So I yeah, you could skip the cutscenes, right? Like the opening cutscenes and stuff like that. You yeah, you can. That. You can skip the the blade quest, uh, the blade cutscenes now, but you used to not be able to when you pulled them. Uh, yeah, it was a, uh, it was a thing. It was Can't awful. It. it literally oh, yeah. would waste like an extra like thirty seconds per pull. It was terrible. I think the weirdest patch was when they patched out. Don't forget me. That was really weird to me. Like. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was part. It was popular. It was funny. Why would they pirate that up? It was part up? of the heart and soul. And like the funny thing no, is, no, yeah, but who really did complain about it though? That was my issue. Who yeah, really? There's one reviewer I think complained about like the repetitive combat dialogue, and it wasn't really that much of an issue. Like, dude, gosh, journalists ruin it. everything. That's why I love. <laughs> see that. See that's why I love the industry. Now it's just become a bunch of complainers. That's yeah, suddenly... I don't know why they change it for one person. Like you could tell, like they even acknowledge it themselves. Like they acknowledge the meme itself and put it in the game. So I was like, why yeah. would they do that? If they know it's so popular. They just is one reviewer. <sighs> Well, I guess they were concerned about the image of the game. That comes first, in a way, so... Yeah, honestly, there was a I lot guess. of image issues when it came to Xenoblade Chronicles 2. So, I can't There's really blame that. There's still a lot of people the game bro. because of the anime style. Yeah, which is unfortunate because, honestly, there's a lot more on the surface. Like I said, it goes a lot deeper in terms of its story and its themes more than people realize. But, like, obviously, because of that exterior, that really, like, that kiddish, cartoonish exterior... Uh, people don't really realize that, but again, it's more than just appearances, you guys. It's what's the content. You're right. <sighs> Anyways. Dude, I just want I just want the next Xenoblade to come out soon, man. Please. I'm, just, I'm not expecting anything <laughs> for holiday dude, I remember. I'm not expecting anything, but I want it to happen soon. What's <laughs> up with Xenoblade Muso? Like, dude, Honestly. you look at Monolith, they're growing. Like, they're growing, man. Z two took off, so I'm just even more excited about what they're going to put out now. <laughs> yeah, I think more than ever. Whatever it is. Uh, I'm content waiting because that means I get to play more Xenoblade 2 and Xenoblade X, the best games yeah, ever, right? Nice. And more, more speed runs, man. Yeah, more Zen fun. Oh, <laughs> dude, dude, speed running, I can never imagine. It seems so stressful. Like, yes. honestly, it. Xenoblade 2 is not as stressful as other runs because there's not a lot of mechanical skill in it. It's mostly just uh, execution and fights and stuff and going from point A to point B. Yeah, honestly, speedrunning isn't nearly as weird as you'd think. Obviously, speaking as someone that, like, you know, you experience a game and everything about it is so unique. Uh, I remember back when I used to do uh, Breath of the Wild speedruns, and the thing is, I initially thought that it was a bad idea, it just ruins the magic of the game, and it's kind of stressful because there's all this stuff that you got away through. But honestly, though, all things considered, the stuff that you discover and it just gives you a better appreciation for the main game if you're not rushing through it, it really does change how you look at it. Yeah, I could just explore the entire game at this point if I would have speed run mm -hmm. Bay 2. There's I feel like I would have learned a lot more about the game if I would just get into speed running in some kind of way, but I doubt I will ever speed run in my entire life. But... <laughs> Understanding the combat in 2 yeah. makes it a lot more fun, honestly. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's one of the other things as well about this particular game is that there's so many mechanics that people uncovered. A lot of people learned how to break the game, what I thought was really cool. For me, it was more like, these are all the pieces, and I'm going to put them all together, and I'll make it effective. That was what my videos were. But then looking at what you know, all these other people did, with, such as NL and what he does, is how you gain so much more appreciation for the combat when you realize that your pieces can go a whole lot longer than you originally thought. And that's the beautiful thing about the internet. Yes, I agree. I remember when... Uh... X came out actually when people didn't really like, care about like the story and so much and like people were like completely focused on like gameplay and stuff with all the post game tyrants and uh, like online systems and stuff. People were like posting like guides about all these like their like post game builds and stuff and it was like a really cool time back then just people like sharing knowledge of stuff they discovered. And now nowadays we know exactly what the best stuff is to like really break the game. But even back then people were breaking the game wide open just because of how damage worked in that game with Overdrive. And I thought that was yeah. a really really cool time and I wish I had a capture card during that time. But <laughs> yeah, one, one, oh, thing well. I, one thing that's weird about X to me is like, no, not about X, but like people who like play X in general, like how they see the game. People say X is a bad game because of the story alone. And that's what I don't get about sometimes, man. Like, how how do you say that? that I mean, the story, the story so is much. terrible, but I do not play the, the story, game for the story. Yes. The well, that time, was kind of the thing, too. I, I feel like the reason why, I mean, yeah, like, uh, you know, Blunz and I, for example, we recently got into Xenoblade X, like, years after the fact. But the thing is, too, I guess part of the reason why, like, people kind of started to gravitate a little bit more towards X and why they have a little bit more feeling for it is because when Xenoblade Chronicles X came out, that was the next Xenoblade game after 1, and 1 was very well known for its story, only to find out that suddenly there was this huge dip in emphasis on story, which got a lot of people concerned and why they learned to, to sort of resent Xenoblade Chronicles X. Then 2 came out with its own story that people really, really loved, so now it's easier to accept X for what it was, because now we know that there is a Xenoblade out there with story, at least. Uh, it was it was Xenoblade X, not Xenoblade 2, so... <laughs> yeah, see, see, that's so... the thing, though. Like That's the problem with like <laughs> these different names and misconceptions. People have their expectations based on what they want, and uh, yeah, we'll see. 
people gotta be more open minded. Yeah. I swear. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> and I think I think two did a great job of like having great gameplay and great story. And honestly, I still mm -hmm. think the gameplay in two is better than X, but that's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, honestly, that's that's actually something I've learned to appreciate in Xenoblade compared to literally every other like Nintendo based fandom that I've ever witnessed. Because they're like, they're, well, let's face it, they're all awful, and usually they end up being, like, you know, having their own brand of bad apples in them. But yeah. by and large, though, when it comes to, like, discourse about discussing which one they like the most, X, 1, or 2, um, people have their reasons, but they're actually very good at formulating their reasons beyond just blind nostalgia, which is really nice. Or, or just a blind disdain for, oh, well, now these games are becoming too anime, so obviously you need to hate <laughs> this <anime>. game. <laughs> You know, like that. That's who anime complaint is so funny. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's weird because it's yeah, it's, no, it's a weird one. It's, it, no, Zeno has literally always been anime. There was like sex scenes and shower scenes in Zeno Saga and Zeno Gears. So, I, mean, I was I was taken aback when I played X and saw that they were straight up with the bikinis. Yeah. Yes, dude, the bikini part, dude. People when when two came out with bikinis, people were like, dude, this is not Xenoblade. Why are we getting swimsuits, dude? That was always that was in every single game. You Literally, about? the beginning of X, <laughs> the beginning of X, the first thing that becomes available is the bikinis, and also when you first meet Lao, what do we get? Not a close-up of Lao's face, no, you get a close-up of the other thing, his ass. Oh, <laughs> I, like, remember I can't, that, yes. Like, I can't believe Xenobay has fallen to this disgrace. <laughs> oh my god. Cut to a picture of Lao's ass. <laughs> like, it's just I disgrace. Want, I wanted to put Matt, that right Shout-outs right shout to Xaxis. No one knows who that is except for me, but shout-out to him, because he says <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. This Gosh. fan service game, how how could they? <laughs> Dude, oh, that was in every single game. Like you could literally take off everybody's clothes in one annex. And you yeah, just take off the clothes the and too. walk around naked. And honestly, even like the term fan service, it could mean so many different things. I actually remember making this point on Xenoblade 2's first anniversary, saying that Xenoblade 2 is a fan service game in more than one way. Obviously, yes, there are the swimsuits, and yes, there are the the the, the jiggle physics that people oh. are so keen on talking Ooh. about. But when you consider also everything about Xenoblade 2, well, yeah, you know, we mentioned the don't forget me thing. Clearly, they're paying attention to the jokes that the fan base has about their games. So they want to add that, which is amazing. Thank you, Monolith. And the other thing, too, is like adding Elma into the game, adding Shulk and Fiora into the game, and having all these different references. That's also a form of fan service, but people don't want to recognize it. Oh, the yeah. fact that we got to have Uncontrollable in this game was also really cool for me, because that was the first time I ever heard it. This one makes me so excited about the future of this game because it's not too often that I get involved into a fandom where like the series is just like now taking out like this is like oh, a yeah. big role for the game like everything in a few anything that happened I'm just saying, our time like, is now. I, I like yes. that comment you made about Monolith paying attention to their fan base. I know I mentioned this in the last episode, but I think it's really just important to iterate again how much they pay attention when you would not even expect it. I think because uh, mm -hmm. like I said I um Xander and Avarex they they both I don't know if you know who Avarex is, but they're like really no well known X players. They both yeah. uh, grinded for Tora's ideas levels like the really hard way, like spending 80 hours just killing a bunch of enemies to raise their <laughs> yeah, I remember that's funny. Oh and in the very next patch, there's like a bunch of like discussion about like what they were doing. In the very next patch, Monolith just adds items to like raise Tora's idea levels automatically. <laughs> in challenge ah, it's, mode. Up. it's really good. I, I love that story. It's a good one. That's messed up. It was a little messed up, but at the same time, it shows that they were, like, actively paying yeah, attention to the yeah, community. Because, yeah. like, I don't think they would have added it otherwise, because that was such a random ad that, like, no one except for people who wanted to, like, optimize the damage in the game wanted, because idea levels increase your damage dealt with elements, and you can't max towards any other way. And that's the other thing I want to appreciate about Monolith 2, is the fact that they pay attention, and they're not at, like, you know, like, they're not, like, some companies which are out of touch, and we haven't really had any, like, stupid, like out-of-touch moments where they're going to add something and we're going to hate it because it's just not in line with what we actually want. Like, kind of what's happening with, like, Pokemon right now. And there's this really Ooh, weird discourse. Pokemon. Yeah, Pokemon has always been a loaded can of worms. It's not even oh, a can man. at this point. It's like it's like a tanker of worms. And the thing is, though, is that, like, considering the, the sort of animosity between Pokemon fans and the Pokemon company, uh, I'm glad that Monolith isn't at that, which is really yeah. nice. They're very honest to goodness about what games they make, and we can appreciate that because we're living in that time right now. Yeah, I think it's only so soon that they're going to get as popular, then it's going to be like too many fans to like get a basic broad view of like yeah. what people want because there's so many exactly. people and oh, yeah. there's so many opinions out there. So you can appreciate how small they are, how small the fan base is right now, in a way. Uh -huh. it, it's like it's it's like inevitable, inevitable. So. Oh yeah, but we'll, we'll enjoy it while we still can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're enjoying it. We it's are. It's like with Atlas, it. like with Atlas in a way, <laughs> but still, because I, I I want I want Xenoblade to be as popular as like Persona in a way, because I know Persona's mm -hmm. huge. 
but at the same time, it does come with its problems. With like oh, the fan base, you get you get even more like toxic toxicity. You know what I'm trying yes, to say? yeah, toxicity yeah. is Persona, one of them. Like, Persona is an interesting fan base. I will say that. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, for me, I I, I, have this, I have this whole soapbox about fandoms in general. I mean, for me, even just being like you know the quote unquote Xenoblade fandom. It's not that bad for now, but I feel like in the future I might get sing a different tune. But by and large, I've always seen fandoms as like sort of this necessary evil that people have, where it's best that you associate with them to the extent that you're friends with certain members of the fandom, and you're friends by that reason, and maybe a couple of other reasons too. Maybe yeah. you all play the same games. But in terms of being the fandom at large, though, I wouldn't be comfortable with that if it turned out that someone in a Xenoblade community um, harassed someone, for example, and then we'd all get lumped in with them. I wouldn't like that. Oh, oh yeah. that's why I hate them. That's why I hate. That's why I like. Okay, look, I first started off my YouTube as Fire Emblem. That's what I was all about. Oh yeah. But over time, I just I couldn't stand the fandom at. Oh, point, I hate man. Fire Emblem. Oh my god. Sorry. Fire, yeah. Every, every I, fandom. I, I feel that. I feel that. I, feel I, feel that. I feel like fandom. I fan, um, Fire Emblem fandom would say the same thing too, though. So, <laughs> I, I, I like too much about I it. I like because I was I was I, I knew the YouTubers on that side to like a good extent, but it was just. Yeah. The fans! Oh my god, I couldn't stand it sometimes. I like the game. I like the game, man. I like the game a lot. It's still one of my favorite JRPGs out there. But it's just sometimes I just can't stand. It. I gotta step away. <laughs> yeah. Ironically, the people that I interacted with in regards to Fire Emblem were pretty nice, but it's because we were playing Muso, and the people that play Muso are really chill. Uh, but then when it comes to like core Fire Emblem, though, uh, all bets are off. It's like it's just with the um the gotcha. I'm gonna go off topic for a little bit, but just like the gotcha oh, and Fire Heroes, man. It's just that's why I stopped making videos on it. That was one of the reasons I stopped making videos on Fire Emblem Heroes because like the controversy, like the banners, like the characters they oh, were putting yeah. out there, and it was just I can't deal with this anymore. And plus, the game was boring <laughs> as hell, so I was like, why am I even playing this game anymore? <laughs> why am I dealing with this? Uh, I, I think all guys, I think all gotchas games. are just like character collectors. Yeah, and you try no, 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 that's kind of what it is. I, I guess that's the reason why I love Fire Emblem Heroes so much is that I never presumed it to be much more than just getting JPEGs of Camilla. <laughs> yes, yes, I mean, yes. So, so that's, that's me. Oh, no, no, <laughs> but, uh, dude, as a Camilla fan, I'm just Camilla's over cool. the moon. Uh, over, oh, I'm just I over guess. the moon right now. As a Camilla <laughs> fan, that's something yeah. I never thought I'd hear anyone say unironically. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, 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 dude, I, I would be I would be like Camilla fan numero uno in this circle of hell that we're in right now. Oh, I mean, nice. I like I like Camilla, but there's just too much of her right now, man. I don't care. <laughs> I know you don't care, that's a thing. <laughs> I do not care. More. But as for me, it's like, God, come on! I don't want more of her. There's like six versions of her, man. Give me somebody else. That's why. That's why I don't understand what goes on through their heads when they oh, release these man. damn characters. You know, you know, that's a really funny thing because the the fans of Fire Emblem are really vocal about how much they hate Camilla. But then she won the vote at Choose Your Legends. So yes, that's like, the thing. Oh, it's because so the people confusing. who aren't vocal, the it's people so who fun. aren't vocal, don't like, say anything because they don't want to be flamed. <laughs> And exactly. You can't, even hate, you can't even hate the devs. You can't even hate. That's what I, I hate know. about Fire Emblem fandom, man. That's one of the reasons why. Because like you can't blame the devs. You want to hate them, but you can't blame them. I'm literally. How are you gonna I'm hate Camilla but have her at the top at the ballot? People I'm literally the, the bad guy too. in the situation. No, it's okay. Don't worry. I, th I think it's funny just watching the fandom like. Uh... Implode Class. on itself. So uh, having Camilla no, see like, that that's the thing. Funny. Like, for, yeah, I guess that's kind of my thing. I, I exist on this weird interstice of the Fire Emblem fandom, and that I'm just here for the Camilla stuff. That's all I am. You nice. guys do whatever. You guys can fight over three houses if you want to. I got her. I mean, that's nice. the thing, man. You, that's what they all said. You you can't hate Fire Emblem more than the fans. That's what they all said. <laughs> exactly. You can't. Oh, you can't. You can't. Do I don't it. even. I don't even particularly like any like Fire Emblem characters outside of like the Tellius games. Anyway. You, you probably just watch from like a spectator stance. Like, oh, this is full funny. Yeah. Look at these yeah. these idiots. I, I actually. <laughs> my, my experience with Fire Emblem was I really enjoyed um, Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn. I recently oh, yeah, enjoyed yeah, yeah. Shadow Dragon, and then like every other game I played, I couldn't even finish. Like, I just, it just, like, oh, they were all so boring to me by comparison, and I was like, mm -hmm. why is Radiant Dawn and Path of Radiant so much better than every other game in this franchise? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I know so many people who would tell you to shut up, and that's not true. <laughs> but that, that's, that, that's oh what being part god. of the Fire Emblem fandom is, though, is You're that right. how dare you like it's this so thing funny. of the yeah, franchise that, that I love so much. Like, how dare like, you like this game over... It's like the Zelda fandom game. on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, oh, I don't know. Man. 
Because even with like the Zelda fandom, you got people that are like, "Oh man, how do you, how dare you like this Zelda game more than my favorite one?" But after a while, it's like, "Oh well, like they have their reasons." And at the end of the day, we all love Zelda. With Fire Emblem, no, I love this one and I hate that one. And if you like this one, well, too bad. I hate, you, I love this one first. It's just you can't win. Oh, it's chaotic evil at its finest. I think I think what I will say is I'm actually like cautiously optimistic for Three Houses after seeing the new trailer for it. I yeah. think uh, story might be going in a better direction. I like the SMT vibe it has going on with the law and hey, chaos it, thing. Oh, hey, yeah. It, it's going to be interesting. I tell you that. It's uh, going to be funny. So I'll probably buy it. Um, if it's bad, then I get to laugh at everyone who thought it was going to be great. So it win win either way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, sometimes I think you get the same thing with Zenobia in a way, but I think people appreciate each game for like what it's like, its main element. Like, Oh, for yeah. example, you have well, extra gameplay and all that other stuff. Honestly, but you still have that side of fans, like in every single fan base. But it's mm-hmm. not as bad with Xenoblade as other. Like, See, that, that's yeah, that's basically what it is. The and thing that's about why I Xenoblade it so much. is even if I like think two and X are better than one, I still think one is one of the greatest games I've ever played, and it's probably still yeah, in the top that's ten. That's what I said. You know, two is my favorite Xenoblade game. Well, not only because it's my first, but I still think one have one of the best stories I've ever played out of the old franchise so far that I've played, and I think Play that's Xenosaga. like undeniable for me. Play Xenosaga. Oh, it's good. oh, I have to play Saga, man. I have to play that, but I don't know if I can. If I, can I honestly that think Saga has a better story than Blade 1 does. Yeah, I haven't played Saga, but I really want to, but I don't think I'll ever get to that point. I might watch a gameplay video on it, to be honest. I might have to, because I don't know if I ever get to it. It's a, it's an interesting game. I, I think the story is definitely the strong point of it. Xenosaga 2 is not that great, but 1 and 3 are really good. Um, the battle system's all right. It's kind of like this uh, turn order system where you can like use uh, combos in like your turns, and you can like change the order of your turn by using like this boost mechanic. It's it's pretty neat. It's not as fun as like the Xenoblade games, obviously, but it it is pretty decent. So I do enjoy it. And yeah, one, everyone watching, go buy Saga if you can, or yeah. play it illegally. But I didn't tell you that. I didn't about... the thing I just said, but you know. Yeah, Gears and Saga. I just hear like those games are, like the most religious games. Yes, they uh, yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, they literally have an appearance of Jesus Christ, like on. Yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> Literal Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. I heard about that. And on Smash. But, <laughs> I was like, okay, okay. Jesus. Me, me and Lee, you're... me and Lee are Christians, if I, so we don't even care. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, no, 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 it's fine. I think no, actually, I love the quaintness of it all because, well, being who we are, it's just great. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's freaking great. Um. Anyways. Okay, well, I don't know what to talk about now. I guess we've been talking for like an hour and 30 minutes, though, so I don't know if it's <laughs> not much wow. longer. It's like yes. 20 minutes. <laughs> I know, but it's, it's great when you're talking about a series you love, right? Time goes by so fast. Yeah, and it's great also just like the idea of being able to discuss with people that love similar stuff and yes. then kind of getting a different perspective of understanding games. And that's and that's exactly things. why I wanted to start this, because it's fun yeah. talking to you guys. It's really nice. Yeah, yeah, I really think, this is my first podcast. I didn't really think they were my thing, so I wasn't really interested, but this is a cool experience <laughs> no, it's great podcast. i didn't think it would be like this interesting to like talk for this long because when i watch podcasts i kind of just skip through it <laughs> I, don't, I don't care it depends on the subject. interesting bits it depends on the just... subject for sure yeah, yeah it really does depend on the subject like anyone that does not give a darn about xenoblade will just be like that are these nerds talking about go eat a sandwich <laughs> <laughs> go for a walk yeah the one oh, podcast nice. i do enjoy a lot is japan time people in that podcast are hilarious oh yeah <laughs> honestly that sounds fun like, uh, like yeah. yeah like rogers and shofu and all those other people they're funny oh yeah yeah oh boy but anyways um yeah no, this has been great though yeah really, really i think that's probably a good this. point to end it off here i don't want this to drag on too long so uh i guess yeah uh, so i guess thanks for joining me you guys i appreciate it yeah, we'll leave the details down in the description as per usual. Yeah, Although I'm pretty sure it'll links. be... I, I feel like it'll be relatively unnecessary considering there's a huge overlap between all three of our bases. Yeah, I mean, I'll still I'll still link all the channels and everything. <laughs> yeah, so but it's, it's like, yeah. I, uh, I know that there's a huge overlap between, um, like, whenever I do stuff, and there's always a like, overlap with Blunds, actually, which I thought was really funny. But, I uh, actually don't know if I have any overlap with Blunds at all, honestly. Like, gameplay and memes are not that related. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I don't know my, what my channel has become, man. Ever since oh, you know, by the way, well, before we continue, yeah. uh, just, uh, congratulations on the 1 million views on This Is Nia. Oh, oh yes. dude. Congrats on that. <laughs> you got the milestone, my friends. 
You've made I kinda it. I kind of want to remake that video, but it's not one of my favorite videos, but I still like it. I don't know yeah. how it blew up, man. When I first started making Xenoblade videos, I put, like, no thought into them at all. I just made them. Yeah, that, that's usually how it goes down, that's, isn't it? That's what happened to me when I started making videos, too. That's why my, like, first three months of videos are terrible, and I try to make, not acknowledge that they exist. <laughs> uh, exactly. No, no that, that's kind of what it is, though, when, when you first start out making videos. Because for me, my most viewed Xenoblade video is, I think, the Mithra showcase and that was like i think that was the first one to go over 100k yeah, views mine is the and first that one was like way obsolete at this point i'm just like come yes. on man it's why like, when, I, when i put when i put effort into my videos they do nothing no nope, like, nothing <laughs> and, but the, the, the videos returns. and the videos i just upload with like no thought process at all and i just like I just put it out there it just blows up i'm like okay well, <laughs> well usually my effort videos like i, I the, the ones that put the most effort in have actually gotten decent views which are like the tier list and the gdq yeah. submission speed run video those are like all yeah like, you'll, like, you'll, you'll have some of them but it's not it's not the, the not getting like recognition, but it's just like I wish they would have blown up as much as they Yeah. Although I did like your This is Torna one though. That was a good one. Yeah, I like that one. That was one of my favorite ones to be honest. Yeah, that, that was definitely one of the coolest ones. Right. That was a great way to kind of cap off the series in my eyes. It's just like, oh sweet, now we get to end up things on a nice note. Woo! Yeah. People were telling me to do one cast and X cast. I will not do X cast. <laughs> 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 but I was thinking about one, but at the same time, one doesn't really have as strong as. I'm not saying they're not bad characters, but it's just like I can't. Really they don't see have many character it. moments. So yeah, like, yeah, not really too many character moments. Because it, it, it's well, it's because it's Shulk story. Yeah, it's, it's Shulk. He, he's the boy. It's, <laughs> it's, it's the adventures Shulk. of, or or as I like to call my playthrough, my first time playthrough. It's the adventures of Ricky and the people that aren't Ricky. Yes. <laughs> oh boy. man. All right. Well, like anyway, I said, uh, thanks you guys for fun. joining me. Um, I guess uh, outro now. So, uh, anything else you want to say before we finish off here? Uh, um, the best girl. Yeah, Mithra, Mithra is best girl. I agree. Cassandra and Hayes. All right. Hayes. And Hayes. All right. And, and Hayes. All, right. All right. Anyway, thanks Cassandra. guys for joining me. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening here. All right, Peace. Cassandra. And since I forgot to include it while still talking to them. Be sure to subscribe to both of these guys if you haven't already and support them in any way you can because they are very cool people and they deserve it. Also subscribe to me too if you somehow haven't already. And with that being said, thank you all so much for listening and have a wonderful day.